So if you would open up your uh, open up your book. Which one? This is gonna be kind of this is gonna be kind of different. You may. Thank you. I have a what, few. Hey, did you bring your? I have a case? few pencils that I can dimmy out. Uh, oh, it's only dim in the I picture. Have a pencil. And you. Kinda. Which page? Someone's Colton. Don't touch right. every one. Anybody else? Yeah, Anybody yeah, else get it? I got a pencil one. Do you need one? Okay. What page? Uh, probably, I don't know, seven. Eleven. Chapter three. What? I'm confused. Oh, we already did about. page ten. Oh, yeah, we yeah. did. We're on page three. Okay, yeah. now. <laughs> My recollection is, and this is what I have marked, is that, guys, we left off on, I was on, I had, just had this marked, on page, I got it, give me just a minute, I was just looking at this. We left on, off on page uh, 13, I think is where I wanted to start. Page 13. So we got to finish up. Lesson two, and then tonight we'll start talking about that. What is worship? Okay, so you, you can all turn to page 13 with me. Okay. Turn to okay. Page 13. Page 13. I'm broke. Okay. Okay. Is there a pencil sharpener here? That's what I got. So, and then the next, the other thing you need to do is to take your small catechism. Okay. Look in the appendix. That's where we were last week. So if you got your small catechism, look in the back. This is on page. Um, it's on page. It, the appendix is on page 351, which is where I am. Page 351. Yep. Lily. May I please go sharpen my pencil? Oh, hey. Uh, I have a sharpener right here. You can use. If there's a trash can in here, you can just. It's one of, my, it's one of the old know. school things, but it works really well. No. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do on your own. And you can work together on this, okay? There's a, there's a, you'll see there's a timeline at the bottom. Is there a pencil sharpener out there somewhere? Probably. She's looking for a trash can. Yeah. Where's her trash can? Use your hand. That's all, that's all right, go ahead. Go ahead. So, if you guys notice, there's a timeline down here at the bottom of page 11. Look at page 11 in your note, in your workbook. Page 11 is where I am. This is like the third or fourth time I said that. Okay? That's okay. All right? So, um, there's a timeline down there and what I want you to do is try to go through and look at look at all of those dates you got you're probably gonna have to write a little bit small look through this article in the appendix on who is Jesus all right on who is Jesus and you'll find some there you'll find that as you read through there there's some dates about some stuff that happened. Now you can just skim through this. I don't expect you to read this whole thing, okay? But just skim through it and look for the dates and see what happened on some of these some of these things um, uh, for those dates, okay? So I'll help you out with the first one. Uh, you'll notice that the first one is 1529. All right. So if you look, big clue there, if you look at the top of page 353 in your small catechism, look at page 353, that will clue you in as to what happened on, in 1529. Can I have a small catechism? You can. I'll let you look at mine. Okay? So look right there. Okay. All right? So you'll see the date, 1529, right? So what happened there? What does the sentence say before that? Uh, my eraser doesn't work. <laughs> what does it make red mark? Yeah. <laughs> Use mine. It's so gonna make black marks. Except for it's not. I don't have another. <laughs> I don't have another. 
example, if you guys uh, can you just share, share the eraser. So who can tell me then, now that I get to everybody with me, so you see huh? where I'm looking? Wait, wait, what wait, happened? What are we doing? What happened in 1529, according to what you just read in the small catechism? What happened? 1529. He published yeah. both the that small thing. and the large catechism in 1529. <laughs> so you can write that, write that there on your timeline. Okay. Everybody, follow along. Mm -hmm. Now, go ahead on your, go ahead, and you can work together with uh, with a partner, okay? Uh, but go ahead and look at the other dates that you have there on the timeline. So the next one you have, Alan, is what? 1530. Yeah, so everybody look and see what happened in 1530, okay? 1530? 1530. Oh. Right there. find it yeah okay now you can just be as brief about it as you can as, as you can really so 1530 this is the first stuff that we're learning about in history yeah well right, right. yeah so it is you go right to church school you go the reformation all of these things that have to do with the, with the reformation uh yeah you you learn these all in your history class history classes as well yeah yeah to write for the 1530. Okay, so Here. let me help you. Let me help you out this time. Okay, so you got confession. So write that. Those two words. Confession. Augsburg confession. Yep. Okay. And go ahead and keep working on your timeline, guys. Okay. Okay. You can find, you can find the. How you doing? You finding all of them? Okay, so look for now 1531. So, so in 1531, let's talk about this for a, a minute since I see that's the one that most everybody is looking at. Melanchthon, this guy named Melanchthon, okay, long name, German guy, but he wrote this thing called the Apology, okay? So what what is what does apology mean to you when you hear that word? Like basically they're admitting to their actions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Saying sorry. Saying sorry, yeah. So okay. but apology actually means something else too. Defense. It means defense, right. And you probably see that I I think it's parenthesized in there, right? Yeah. Doesn't it say that? Yeah. So so did you ever, did you know that? Did you guys ever know that that apology is also a word for defense? No. So when they so in this sense with the Lutherans when they wrote this document the apology, okay, of the Augsburg Confession, it was it was the defense. That word that word then means the defense of the of the uh, of the confession. How are we doing? You getting the rest of them? Just keep keep plugging away at it. That's fine. I don't want to spend too much more time on this, uh, but it, it is kind of important that we just talk about these things and you guys just kind of have a sense of what was happening with the church and the things that they were doing at, at uh, this time. The next one we have is 1536. What did you come up with for, for 1536, Willie? The small called articles. Yeah, small called articles. Small called articles. Very good. How's everybody doing? Are you too bored tonight? Mm -hmm. It's warming up. Yes? Did you I'm say just yes? Sore, though. Yeah. I'm just very sore. You're just very what? Sore. Sore? Today was weird for me. It's boring. Today was weird for you? Yeah, I saw some weird stuff. 
Wait, what's the camera doing? I think every day has been weird in like 2020. He's fighting like cats and throwing leaves at each other. My school sucks. I watched a video of a dude making a cat do I watched a video of a dude making a cat do a triple back Yeah, it was a little boy throwing his cat. Yeah, it was like that. Yeah. And the cat scratched him in the face. What you need? I'm in detention. No, no, no. Um, I don't know the quarantine because I don't know. So okay. I don't get exposed. I'm just going to wait until they say you have a seven o'clock. Okay. Like, you know, I think that's just like a team of people. No, I was only kidding. Know. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Oh, 1580, boy. I'm done. I'm done. Four. I have a quick question. Yes. You're done? Okay, good. Who is the guy above his head? Oh, um, he follows your, um, if you, like... That's your mom. No. Who is this, that guy? No, no. The, that, that guy. guy. That old, guy. The old guy. The old guy. Oh, back. I know If you go in here in the dark, Isn't that the his one eyes who won't follow you. His name is CFW, <laughs> CFW <laughs> Walter. I know who he's it like is. The, he's like the earliest... I know who it is. It's like one of the earliest people a part of Divine Shepherd Lutheran. Not Divine Shepherd. Or er, Lutheran. That's Here. good. He's one of the... <laughs> He's like the founding father of the Missouri Synod, yeah, which that's is what, what we're is. part of. His Lutheran eyes do fall. Lutheran yeah, Church, do. Missouri Synod. His eyes do fall. Yeah, that's sick. That's creepy. <laughs> Yummy. That's him. Yeah, CFW, <laughs> CFW <laughs> Walter. I have nightmares okay. tonight. Wait, what do we do the for the Read <laughs> Romans? Yeah, so I, I, I kind of skipped show. that, and I think that's even more important. Why? We should look at that real quick. But, um... If you would, in your in your workbook, take a look at Romans 3, 21 through 28. What I'll do is, to save time, to save time, I'll read this aloud to you guys, and then I want you to summarize what the passage says about who Jesus is and what he has done for us. I have a question. Yes. Can I hand out gum to some people? Oh, yes, please. No. 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 No, right now. No. Then can I chew my own? No. no. Why? Because. I didn't ask. <laughs> nah, just don't do it. Right Wait, now. what page do we go on? Okay. Your mom. So I'm going to read, Stop. I'll read this to you. We have the same mom. Okay. There you go. No, all right. You were born by a completely different person. So? So that's not the same. Uh, I who has a Bible with them? I do. Me. May I borrow your Bible? Yes. I left my Bible in the other room. I'm pretty sure that's our mom. Let me read this to you. Yes. Bless you. Who was that? Your mom. Colton. Stop, that's so annoying. You're annoying. Too. <laughs> okay. Prove it. Are you ready? Let me read this to you. You guys ready? Yeah. This is Roman 8. Three, sorry. Jeez, I knew that didn't look right. Yeah. Three twenty-one through 28. Okay, here we go. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus. Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that no one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. So, the box there says, in your own words, summarize what this passage says about who Jesus is and what he does for us. So I'll give you a couple of clues again. The righteousness of God, 
through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. So we get this gift from God that he gives us when we believe in him because, because, of, because of what his son what his son did for us on the cross. That is, dying to save us from our sins. And to forgive us. And we're justified by his grace as a gift. There's nothing that we can ever do to make ourselves good enough for God. Isn't this a great thing when you think about this? And he gives this, he gives this to us freely as a gift, his grace. He loves us so much, all right, that he, it's a gift. It's not... It's not something we can never make ourselves good enough. We don't even have to really worry about that in a sense because because no God, Jesus, be. becomes our righteousness for us because he died on the cross for our sins. Okay? So whom God put forward is a propitiation. Anybody ever heard that word? It's a big word, propitiation. Nope. You know what it, okay, I so should, nobody knows what it means? I'm pretty sure I have heard it, I just don't know what it means. Okay. Oh. All right. So propitiation means that he he stepped in he stepped in in our place basically something that we deserve he shed his blood for us for our sins and this is something that we deserve we deserve we were the ones that should have been punished and put on the cross okay but we didn't have to we didn't have to do that but technically we didn't sin yet because none of us were born. Oh boy, that's a great theological thing that you just said there. Okay. Great question, but we can't go down that rabbit hole tonight. Why not? Because we can't. I'm not rabbit hole is so very good. I'll get. I'll, what? He is your teacher. teacher says that all the time. That's a great, great comment, though. And seriously. Now, what I can tell you is, is the Bible very clearly tells us that we're born in sin. We're all born in sin. Even innocent little babies, as much as we love them. And my daughter just had twins, okay? So I'm I'm a grandfather of, she's got four boys now, my daughter. And yeah. And so she just had she just had twin boys, and they're like super cute, but they're not innocent. Because the Bible tells us that they're still born in sin. But he didn't know we were going to be alive yet, so how did he know that we were going to be alive? But he sin? did know that. He did know that we were going to be alive. He knew, that because, he knew eventually people were going to be alive. Because God knows. Well, yeah, but he didn't know exactly okay. who we were. I know he did. That's why he didn't did. say exactly he who would be the saved. Whole future. Yeah, that's why he because said he made it. Lily, that's why he said everyone, because he didn't know who would be born. He knew that people would be born. So well, we do know that. This doesn't right, make right. Sense. We do know that yeah, Christ. Right. We do know that Christ died. Jesus died for the sins of the world, for everybody. Whether they believe that or not, that's a whole other that's a whole other issue. But Jesus died for the for all for all mankind, all sins. It's done. It's paid for. Now, whether somebody wants to believe that or not, or whether somebody wants to reject it is a whole other matter. Whether they if they say, Well, this is all really, really, Vicar, this is all a bunch of fairy tales. All this stuff you're talking to these kids about, it's well, just yeah, a bunch of made up nonsense. Tales. Yep. Because we could, you know, people people actually think that way too. Yes, ma'am. But like, okay, so you want to argue again? No. <laughs> Why did they need to kill him because of our sins? Though? They didn't need to. He chose to. Otherwise, we would. But why? Why? Because they don't want us yeah. to. Oh, he just really likes yeah. us. So yeah, for sure. he didn't even know most of us yet. Because. Did you not hear what I just said? <laughs> yeah, I know, but like technically so, he didn't know no one. Okay, so that's why he forgave everyone. He didn't know exactly who would be like. So okay, be, so because yeah. I'm just going into depth. I like going into depth. So, I'm sorry, I lost track of your question. Can you ask me one more time, please? <laughs> that's like an hour-long question. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it was. We don't even spend an hour nice. on the class. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Not really. Yeah, well, like Ask me your question again. Never mind. No, it was a good question. I got sidetracked. How do you know we were right. born before? No, look. No, no, we already, we already no. got that one. Why did he die for our sins? Like, what was the point? Because he loved us that much. Okay. <laughs> because 
Why was he so, so happy? So there's this idea. There's this idea that somebody has to. Somebody has to. Something has to be a sacrifice. If you read the Old Testament, okay. Let me start there. So if you if you if you read some of the stuff about the Old Testament and what they had to do in the you know for worship, they had to bring animals for sacrifices, and there was this blood that had to be offered on the altar to atone. For, some, for the sins, for someone's sins. Why couldn't it be someone else? So it was this, it was this, <laughs> it was this, just it was said, this. Why did it have to be a person? So it was no. this slaughter, it was this mess, and animals, okay, were, were, were used for that. There was always, there was always a sacrifice for the atonement, okay? So finally God says, look, I'm going to try to make this as concise as I can. God says, look, you know, they're still not listening to me. They're still not believing. You know, they still don't follow my ways. I'm going to send my son, and surely they'll follow him and listen to the, listen to him. What did they do with God's son? They killed, they killed him. They killed him and they hung him on a cross. Okay. Jesus lived the perfect life of the law that we we could not. The law from the Old Testament. He did that for us. Um, did something that we could not, and, he, and because of that, he became the first the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He died on our behalf. Because of sin, because of, of our, our corruptedness, because of who we are, and the way that we're born, we're corrupt. We're sinners. Um, we, de we deserve punishment and death. And this happens, this, this also is because of this idea about um, uh, original sin where uh, Adam, because of what Adam and Eve first did when they took the forbidden fruit from the tree, then because of that, the entire entire creation was corrupted. Now, does, that does not mean that I'm calling you guys corrupt. I'm not saying that because uh, we are still God's creation, but we are sinners. We're born in this world as sinners. Long answer. It was longer than I intended. For it. I, I, I didn't was... hear most of it. Okay. Can I look? Yeah. Wow. No. Right. I heard it. It was just All really right. long, and I couldn't remember different words. Did anybody write anything down in the box about anything oh, I read? Oh, yeah, I did. I did. No. Okay. I did. So at this point, go look at that on your own this week. Okay. okay. Read that. That's not that much. That's not that much reading. I'm asking you to do. Um, out of the Bible. Ooh, no, we're not done yet. What page we're not done yet. Uh, May I see your book? Thank you. All right, so if you guys would turn now to page 12. I have on paper. Papers. Okay, so you had this timeline that you did, and you wrote down all of this stuff. Okay, put all those documents together and all that stuff that was talked about, and we call that the Book of Concord. Okay, that was published in 1580. I believe that was probably the last date on your timeline, right? Okay. No idea. Yeah. Yeah, that was a while ago. Play along. 1580. So we have all these documents, and this is called the Book of Concord. Um, the the large and small catechism are included in. The Book of Concord. Okay? It's in there. So, I want somebody to read this paragraph for the class. That's at the top of the page. In red? Yes. Would you please read that for the class? Yeah. The Lutheran Church accepts without re reservation the scriptures as the inspired in... in, in I can't, I can't write. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Inspired. Inerrant. Inerrant. Word of God and created the possession of in the Book of Concord as a true and alternated oh, statement and explosion of the word, word of God. The Word of God is an ultimate standard of Christ, Christian teaching. The, the Lutheran Confession of Norman. What's the word? Normative. Normative. Yeah, for our teaching because they, hold, they wholly 
accord with the word of God. They are accepted not in so far as they match up with the word, but because we have, but because we have come to know that we are, that they correctly explain the word. Now pass them to me, Jesus. Thanks. Okay. So, the Book of Concord. Okay. This is, we call this our Lutheran confessions, too. That's what you were just reading there, basically. So that's our confessions. The Book of Concord, listen, this is, this is the most important thing I'm saying about that right now. The Book of Concord is not the Bible. It is not Holy Scripture. Did you hear what I said? Yes. The book, don't, don't bump the camera. The Book of Concord is not Holy Scripture. The only scripture that we have, holy scripture, is this. The Bible. That's it. Okay? So, the book of Concord is this exposition, fancy word, on, on, the, um, on, on the Bible. It helps us to understand, okay, the doctrines and, and, and the things that we confess and believe from the Bible. That's what the Book of Concord is. So if somebody ever comes up to you and says, hey, Lily, I hear you're a Lutheran. And you go, yeah. And they go, oh, you guys, you know, in your Book of Concord, you know, that's like that's like your Bible. And you can go, no, it's not our Bible. Uh, the Bible, the Word of God is the Word of God. Okay? Okay? Everybody good on that so far? Yes. Let's move along. Let me see where we're at here. Okay, we're going to move on to lesson three. I'm going to try to I'm going to try to plow through this pretty quickly, uh, as quickly as I can. Follow along, all right. So worship. Let me ask you a question. What's your favorite part of worship in your in church in your congregation? What's your least favorite part? Be honest. Be honest with the vicar. So let's start with what's your favorite thing about church? My favorite part is when you're praying about people. Praying. Okay, I like that. That's good. I Grace? like the singing part. The singing part. The benediction. The, ben the benediction. Why? Because church is over. Yeah. This one. <laughs> I like the <laughs> singing part. What's that? I like the food. The food. Okay, well we don't always have we don't always have food. Well, if you bring food, there's food. Right. I usually get food. Actually, okay. 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 My second favorite would be communion. Okay. I don't even do anything. The Lord's Supper. Okay. That's my point. Now, let's do the second part of it. What's your least favorite part? Be honest about church. Okay, the sermon she said. What's the that? standing up and sitting down. The standing, standing up and sitting down. Why do they do all that stuff? Well, um, having to stay still. Having to stay still. I get yelled at that a lot. You get yelled at about Wait, that is a lot. Least favorite. Yes. Least favorite. Um, having. Okay, I like hearing about people that need praying for, but I don't know how to do this. Okay. It's hard for me. Um, Grace. I don't like how it takes a long time. And um, I also don't like how we have to like sit down, and then we sit down, and they're like, "Time to stand up," and we're like, "We just sat yeah. down." Yeah, yeah. That's exactly that's what, what I that's also exactly that's question. what she just said too. Yes, ma'am. It says, "No, ma'am." Me and Aaron are <laughs> like, up there. Okay. It looks like it looks like a like water stained yeah. snowman well, or something. That's precisely what it is. That's what it is. That's smart. They, it's somebody made a snowman that. out of a water stain. I think that's actually pretty creative. Okay. Um, so look at the please look at the third commandment in your catechism go ahead and find it see if you can find where the third commandment is in your small catechism go ahead look I found it found it you yeah some of your Bible well here look at it but I want to look at it in the catechism good job 
I read it out of the book. Yeah. Found it. What does this mean? We should fear and love God. Oh, that's what you find it. Find it on your own. Third commandment. What does it say? Word. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. We should fear and love God so that we do not de despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly fear and learn it. Okay. Because I'm smart. Just that kidding. is great. Right. So we should not do what? Remember the Sabbath day and keep it despise holy. Despise preaching and his word. Do not despise the preaching and his word. No. Right? Why are you so okay. pale? I think there's some further explanation. Well, can I, may I borrow yeah, that from that? He's looking at mine. We should fear so, and love God. What's that? It says we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching. That's right. We should fear and love God. Now, in your catechism also, I fear him, you will see... It's not that kind of fear, though. It's like I feel like we learned that like six years ago. I feel like this is my first time at church. Really? Yeah. Al? Okay. okay. Great. My dad never. Oh, in elementary school. Okay. We're at church now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. you went to church. Like a few times. Okay, so if you look on page 74 in the explanation, 74. page 74, mm -hmm. you guys can look there with me. That's so 74. far away. Uh, page 74. I turned right to Lex it. Lexi can no, look off did. there with yes, you. I did. Let me I see you. 74. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to die. What? Yeah, I turned to die. It's so Gucci. God invites us, here's the central thought. See where the That's see where it, it says central thought? Reflect God invites word. us to rest, reflect on his word, and receive his forgiveness in order to strengthen our faith in him. When people set aside that time for rest, how do they spend their time? How do a lot of people, when they think of rest, how do they spend their time? Sleeping. What's another way? What's another thing that people do? Eating. 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 Okay. Um... Dreaming. Dreaming because you're sleeping. Daydreaming. Daydreaming. I'm a good daydreamer. I found a bunch of Jenga pieces. <gasps> found a bunch we of should, Jenga pieces. I need some of those. Lexi, can you think of anything else? Oh, when you're resting. But, but, but. Anybody but, else over here? I Any thoughts? I have an idea. What you do when you're resting. Play video games. Hey. Watch TV. Right? Um, yell at Titus. Yell at Titus. <laughs> yell at Titus. <laughs> yell at my brother. Read. You read. Okay. I, said, I don't do that. So, okay. I never read. Wow. All right. I don't like what's, what's, what's something, what's, what has become like almost, well, it has become like another pastime on Sundays for a lot of Americans. Church? What is that? No, I'm not talking about church. I think, well, that actually, actually, you're onto something there because a lot of people treat church as a pastime. Like a Sunday nap. A Sunday nap. What is something that? Grocery shopping. Okay. Anybody? Anybody in here like to watch football, NFL? No. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm so, the down. Sometimes. Sometimes our our love of sports and those kind of things can get in the way of us, you know, spending time spending time with God in church. Okay. So God wants us, he tells us, he commands us, he wants us to be in worship, but he also wants us to rest, that we should give ourselves a day of rest. But he wants us to rest in him, too, okay? So it's important that we come we, we come to worship. Here, you can't watch the Super Bowl at church. That's okay, looking for mine. Where did it go? I did get them All right, so... So, think about your church. Is it historic or modern? Uh, modern. modern. Historic. Our church is, this church, this building, our, actually our chapel is a, is a little newer. I want to say yeah. our chapel is our church, yeah. our sanctuary. I think it's only about four or five years old. Right? That's four or five years old? Yeah. yeah. No, it's so three. remember, I've only been here for a year. It's three. That's like three years old. I've only been here for a year. It's like three years old. Two or three years. Actually, I've been here since. I've is it very, is, is, our, church, is our church very small? Yes. Or very no. Large? It's, it's big. small. It's pretty big, but it's small. 
Yeah, it's very big. Fountain Springs, I'd say, I'd say for this, I'd say for this, so for our big. area we're in, for Blackhawk, I'd say it's pretty big size. It's a pretty good size church. For how small Blackhawk okay. is? Yeah. At the Hill I City Church, good. like there's four. Right, Hill City is even smaller. Yeah, I've been in that church too. I know. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to draw a picture of the church right now. Turn a page. Turn a page. I like church. Yay! I suck at drawing anyway. See? Woo! Yay! Well, sometimes. Hey, I'm like, I'll look at the other side. Yay! So. Where's my bowl on? Why do I keep losing my bowl now? I know. Who knows? Why do I keep? I keep yeah, losing in my crystal watch. Yep, yeah. We're oh, almost there, the guys. Okay. Let me read something to you. Again. Okay. Can you be good listeners? Yes. yes. I'll try to be a really good reader. I can you be a good, really good, try. really good listener. I can okay? try, but I promise. What is worship? If you want to follow along with me, I'm reading on page 358. I'm going to try to read this quickly so we can save some time. Follow along. God wants to be worshipped through faith so that we receive from him those things he promises and offers. That's from the Apology of the, Luther, of the, um, uh, of the uh, Augsburg Confession. Uh, it's Article 4, Paragraph 49 is what all that stuff means that you see there, if you're following along. The highest worship of God is faith that receives all that he promises in his word. Faith comes by hearing. The word That's of Christ. how our faith is strengthened. When we hear God's word and God brings his good gifts to us in church. Okay? Faith, faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. That's Romans 10, 17. And faith speaks back to God using the words he has given. So in our liturgy, in this stuff that we use in church, we, we use a lot of words and text from the Bible that we speak back to God in the worship. It's really awesome. In a sermon preached at the dedication of a new church, Luther prayed that nothing else may ever happen in it except that our dear Lord himself may speak to us through his holy word and we respond to him through prayer and praise. The divine service is structured around Jesus Christ speaking to us in his word in the sacrament of the altar and our answering in confession, thanksgiving, praise, and prayer. The whole of the divine service is encompassed in the Lord's name as Christians are gathered in his name. That's called the invocation. And sent back into the world in the same name called the what? When we're sent back into the world... Okay, Jesus. at the end of the service, what's it called? You said it's your favorite part. Oh. The benediction. Yeah. <laughs> the whole service in word and supper is centered in Jesus Christ. Con confessing our sins and receiving his forgiveness, we glorify our triune God using words he has given us in the scriptures, psalms and biblical hymns of praise. The liturgy, the order of worship, seeks to assist Christians in hearing the whole counsel of God. Then we have this lectionary that's a system of scripture readings from the Old Testament, the epistles, and the gospels. You know how we go in church? We have a reading from the psalm, and then we have an Old Testament reading, and then we have a gospel reading, an epistle reading, and then a gospel, right? That's what that's, what that's talking about. And they're arranged according to the church year. Having heard God's word, we confess the faith in one of the church's creeds, which is the one that we most often use in our church. The Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, right? <laughs> right? Very good. Okay. What's the other, what's the one that's next to that that we use? Nicene Creed. Nicene, right. And then there's the Athanasian, which is the super, super long one. Remember, we kind of just glanced at that a little bit. Okay. We answer the, this proclamation with prayers for the church, the world, and ourselves. Our offerings support the life and mission of the church in grateful response to all of God's gifts to us. God gives us his promises of forgiveness, life, and salvation in more than one way. Along with his preached word, the Lord gives us his body and blood to eat and to drink in his supper. We come to the Lord's table praising the Savior who comes to us, acknowledging his saving presence in the words of the angelic hymn from Isaiah 6, and praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. The pastor speaks the words of our Lord over the bread and wine, which gives us the true body and blood of the Lamb of God to eat and drink. 
having received Jesus' body and blood with our own mouths, we give thanks to him, praying that this holy gift will strengthen us in faith toward him and love from one another. Having been served by Christ, we now go back into the world as, we, as the pastor gives us the benediction with his name on us to worship him in our daily lives as we present our bodies as living sacrifices. Thanks for listening to that. Yep. So that just that's a quick summation, and that's really good. That's in your explanation here, in the appendix, uh, in the in the uh, of explanation of what is worship. Okay, um, and so it's it's almost time for me to stop. Okay, we're almost there. Two minutes. <laughs> Not on. This is we can add across to like 745. We have three minutes. Why does the teacher say that the bell doesn't dismiss you ideal? Well, then what is the bell for? Precisely. Because then it doesn't matter when we get into class. Did you know apparently it's illegal for your teacher to hold you back? I'll wait until you guys are done. Huh? Well, I can assure you, I don't, I don't have to necessarily let you out at 7 o'clock. The vicar can apparently keep you here as long as he wants. Uh -oh. Guys, be quiet. I have peanuts. No, I don't do it. Okay. So when, so let me ask you a quick question, because because uh, next week we're going to finally be able to get into this. I'm going to skip a, a little bit more of this lesson three, and yes. next week we are going to start getting into the Ten Commandments which is okay. I kind of went fast with this tonight because that's where I want to land with you guys next week, okay? That's, this is all important, okay? But when we talk about worship and why is it that we do that, before I let you go, what, 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 what is the purpose of the Ten Commandments? What is the purpose of the law? Who remembers this, that you've talked about this before? Who can tell me oh. that? What's the purpose of the law? The purpose is to keep order. That's one purpose of the law, but you are right. Okay? Keep things from getting out of control and having people get hurt. That's keeping okay. order. What's exactly the, what so I'm really that. trying to drive at a little bit more, guys. Like when I'm asking you about the law, just let's think of it, let's think of it in the context of the Ten Commandments. What is the purpose of the Ten Commandments? God's law. That's God's law. Okay, think of the second table, which which uh, one of the commandments is that that we we should not what? We should not murder. Right? Yeah. Okay? Yes. Do we see murder in our world? Yes. Sure we do. Do you what you got? Um, I was gonna say it's to like help us remember like what he did for us and like like who he wants us to become, I guess. Okay. If that makes sense. So we're going to pick this up next week, but here's what I was looking for. The, the law shows us our sin. The law shows us our sin. Yeah, if we I look at the Ten so Commandments, if we look at the Ten Commandments, okay, have you been able to, if you look at that honestly and you say, have I, did I, was I able to follow the Ten no. Commandments today? Did I do no it? No. Did I put God first in everything that I did? Or was I more was I more interested in playing my video games or watching football, or all that kind of stuff? Sunday came, I was a little tired, you know, and I really didn't want to go to church, and I, so I slept in, and you know, after all, I didn't I didn't need to go to worship. Besides that, I go to church on Wednesday nights, and I have to sit through that catechism class with the vicar. Why do I have to? Why should I have to do anything else? Sundays, I'm just going to take the day off. I haven't honored God. I broke the commandment, right? It shows us, okay, it shows us our sin and it shows us our need our need for God. We're going to pick that up next week. Yes. Why did they pick Wednesdays and Sundays for church and catechism? In American culture, those are the, those are kind of, kind of where, it, I can't remember how many years it started, but that's a very good question. Um, and maybe if I remember, I'll do a little research on that and give you a better answer on that. On why we ended up, because technically the Sabbath is is Saturday, but the American Sabbath is Sunday. It has been for a long, long time. Why did it change? 
Again, very, very good question. And that's he not that's not a time. question I can give you a real good answer to. So could we do this? Could I ask you guys to close your books? Yes. I want you to quiet your hearts and minds here for just like two more, maybe one more minute or so. And if uh, if we could, if I could pray, and then we'll close out and we'll say uh, the Lord's Prayer together. Um, I did not ask for prayer requests. And quickly, are there any prayer prayer requests? Yes. Me? For my sister who has mental health problems. That is disrespectful. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll actually say one more time. You are my mom me. because of her back. Okay. For your mom and her back. <laughs> Let's keep the door closed, okay? <laughs> Sister. Right. That's my, little sister. Um, my friend, that was she was in quarantine people. and no, she started having know. symptoms, so she used to do it all over again. And she was almost done. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Friend, and we'll call a friend in double quarantine. Yeah, it sucks. That I agree with that. Yeah. I'm done. Lily. Lily. Uh, my elderly grandpa has Corona. Corona. Okay. Grandpa. Not exactly, but it's not. Something that would laugh about, Alan. It's called COVID, not Corona. If Papa died, you'd cry. What? Corona, the drink. Actually, that's. I bet you drank it when we were here. Okay. Alan, you have. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, all right? Here we go. We're going to be respectful while we do this, too. All right? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us again tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your word as we learn about you. We learned about we learned a little bit tonight about what it is to be in worship uh, here in church, and we thank you for those things. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity that we're going to have to be in the commandments uh, beginning next week. Um, tonight, we pray for, for uh, Alan's mom, who's having a back, uh, some back issues. We pray for Grace's friend that just came out of quarantine and is going back in to quarantine again. Uh, Lord, be merciful to us because this this year, this this uh, COVID, this virus has been uh, it's it's been a scourge to us in our in our world and in our nation. And Lord, but you know about it. We pray that you would be with her friend that's dealing with this. We pray for Lily's grandpa who is also sick from this illness. And we would pray that you would be merciful and give him a complete and full recovery uh, from the virus as well. And now, Lord, we, we pray uh, together the prayer that, that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right. The Lord bless you all and keep you, give you a safe